Today we'll be talking about the Diels-Alder reaction, and for this we'll be looking at the reaction of maleic hydride with two different dienes. In part one we'll be looking at cyclopentadiene, and in part two we'll be looking at butadiene. Now Diels-Alder is very useful as it is one of the most powerful synthetic methods for synthesizing unsaturated six-membered rings. The Diels-Alder reaction is classified as a 2,4 cycloaddition of a conjugated diene, which just means you have two, uh, two alkenes right next to each other that are conjugated with each other, and a dienophile, which can either be an alkene or it can be an alkyne. For today's lab, we'll be focusing primarily on alkenes as the dienophile. Now the Diels-Alder reaction works best if two different criteria are made. Um, the first criteria is that these reactions work very well when the dienes are electron rich. So these substituents could look like ethers, alcohols, different amines, and even just other um, carbon-based groups. Essentially, as long as there are electrons that can share and push in it's their electrons into the system, the reaction is going to work uh, best. For the dienophiles, um, these, the, react, the Diels-Alder reaction works best if they are electron deficient. So different groups of these include ketones, aldehydes, esters, nitriles, or any halogen. All of these groups are electron withdrawing and will actually and will take electron density away from the dienophile, thus making it a more favorable reaction when paired, especially with an electron rich diene. So, looking at dienes in, um, in particular, uh, we know that there are two different conformations of dienes. You have trans dienes. And you have cis dienes. Now with these two conformations, which can undergo Diels-Alder? To best answer this question, we look at the molecular orbital diagrams. So if we draw in what the orbitals of this would look like, We can then see if there is any favorable overlap when the dienophile is brought in. All right, so now we look to see if there's any overlap between the orbitals here. So we know that for this reaction that we need to form bonds between this carbon here and this carbon over here. So the overlap needs to come from the pi orbitals here and here, as well as the pi orbitals here and here. Now, as you can see for the trans conformation here, that is a very wide, very wide um, in chemical space. This is going to have no overlap, as there's just too much distance between the pi orbitals in order to even attempt that reaction. However, when we look at the case of the cis, when we connect those carbons that we want to be formed again, we can see that the orbitals in question are much closer to each other, and you can see how these, re these orbitals are in fact close enough to each other. So we have good overlap in the case of the cis conformation. So for Diels-Alder, we only see reactivity when the diene is cis. 
Now let's move on towards looking at the general mechanism of Diels Alder. You can see on the slide that I have butadiene as well as a generic dienophile to use in this reaction. And you can see that the product is already there. So the first step is we need to make sure that we draw our diene in the proper format as this needs to be cis. Next, we go ahead and we can draw our dienophile also in a favorable format and draw all the extra appendages on here. And you can see that the two, the two groups on the dienophile are also cis to each other, but this could easily have been trans, but is important to keep in mind for later on. So from here, you can imagine very similar like we did on the last slide of where the bonds are actually going to be forming and almost draw phantom lines of where that's going to go. Then from here, the mechanism happens in a single step. I like to start with the dienophile taking the electrons on that double bond and pushing it up to form that new carbon-carbon bond. Then going counterclockwise to the next double bond, these electrons get pushed down to form the new alkene. And then finishing th this up, these last electrons get pushed down to form the second new carbon-carbon bond. And this happens all in a single, st single step to form the product. Because this all happens, you have the bonds breaking and forming in the same motion, we call this a concerted mechanism. The other thing I'd like to note here is if you look to the final product, the two substituent groups that were originally on the dienophile in the final product, shown with stars here, are both facing upwards. They're both coming out of the board. This could have easily both has been drawn as them both going you know, um, down into the board, both having dashed lines. But the key point here is that both are always going to be facing the same way because the original dienophile, the substituents were cis to each other. Because they were cis, there's no other confirmation. They can't go one or the other. They have to both be either up or both down. So keep that in mind as we go forward. All right, so now let's look at today's experiment. Um, as I said in the beginning, today's experiment is separated into two parts, but both are going to look at maleic acid here. So looking first at part one, we'll be looking at the reaction of maleic acid and cyclopentadiene to form this compound here, where we have these two substituents that are coming out of the board, these that are going in and behind the board to form this compound here. However, to even get to the cyclopentadiene in the first place, there's an extra step that is necessary that this needs to be cracked. So what cracking actually means is that cyclopentadiene at room temperature will actually f uh, undergo a retro Diels alder reaction with itself. So in order to break those bonds to actually use just cyclopentadiene, uh, we need to distill this. And then once we uh, get the cyclopentadiene, we need to make sure that we keep it cool as it does react with itself at room temperature. But after that distillation, uh, that cracking occurs, we can then form our product. Now with here, one question we wanna ask is, do we also see an enantiomer with this product? Because you could envision that this product here can also be up as well, where you have the substituents that come from the maleic acid are going out of the board towards you. Now, the reason why this is important is that these two molecules, one and two, are different from each other, and that's because you have the bridge heads here that are also coming out. So take a look to see if you if 
we see in an antiomer with this reaction. Now moving to part two, the malic acid stays the same, but we change the diene to butadiene. And we expect to get a compound that looks like this. Similarly, in part one, the diene is not readily available to us. Um, in the case of butadiene, we're going to make this in situ via, via the thermal decomposition of three sulfonone. But this reacts um, in the uh, reaction vessel um, to form the butadiene as a gas that will then react with the maleic acid. However, does this product here form in an antiomer? What makes it different from the product that we see in part one? We in fact should not expect any antiomer as if we draw out the other orientation for this. We can imagine just flipping this compound over on its head. 180 degrees around here. And this is the exact same as our original. So we sh should not expect an antimer.